Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And let me start by thanking both of you for your service. Um, and to our native Cincinnatian, uh, like me, I'm going to start with you because you are from Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> re Ukraine. Uh, after the Revolution of Dignity in 2014, I had the opportunity to go over shortly after that and see what was going on. And incredible, here you have a country that was dominated by Russia, chose uh, to take a different direction to encourage economic and political freedom, joining with us in the EU, and uh, we needed to stand by them. And to a certain extent, we did, but for the first couple years, we refused to give them the assistance they needed to defend themselves against the Russian aggression. I've also been to the line of contact. I've seen where 3,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed. Um, it's a hot conflict. I don't care what people say. And, um, and they needed the opportunity at least to try to defend themselves. They weren't asking for U.S. troops. They were asking for, for help. In 2017, 18, 19, the Trump administration did that. And I think that should be noted. Uh, it was a bipartisan effort up here on the Hill, by the way, starting in 2014. And I appreciate the fact you raised that in your written testimony. Uh, my question for you is, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, one, I think it's important that we reestablish the fact that uh, we are indeed allies of Ukraine and that we want to help them. And uh, as, again, this administration has done uh, uh, without precedent, we've been helpful to them. But what do they need now? Talk a little about anti-aircraft uh, weaponry, uh, among other things. What can we do to be more helpful in addition to the Javelin missiles and to the ships that we've now provided? Uh, well, Senator, I'd actually add that uh, not only am I a Cincinnatian, I grew up in your old House district, if I recall correctly, but... Uh, Even better. Um, Who'd you vote for? Is it, no, it's good. <laughs> that doesn't get, me a, doesn't get me a pass on the question, though, does it, sir? No. <laughs> um, I, I actually am not in a position to speak to the specific uh, operational needs of the Ukrainian armed forces. We have certainly gone to enormous trouble, as you quite correctly point out, uh, to try to help them in the very difficult situation that Russian aggression has put them in. I believe we've given something on the order of uh, one point six billion dollars or so in various state and DOD um, assistance for their armed forces. That does include, as you indicate, uh, the Javelin anti-tank systems. Uh, I believe there are more Javelins uh, in the pipeline. I think Congress has been notified of an additional uh, move in that respect. Um, I'm not in a position to speak to precisely what it is that they need next, but I, I can certainly, uh, uh, certainly One agree. thing that would be helpful, I think, to, to the committee, I saw that in your testimony, $1.6 if you could provide us with a list of what has been provided, because there's been some information out there, I think it hasn't been accurate, and, and again, if you could, uh, in talking to the appropriate people, give us a sense of what is, what is needed. Um, Under Secretary Hale, in talking about Ukraine, uh, as you know, President Zelensky has chosen to take the initiative in terms of a, a peaceful settlement of what's going on on, on the uh, eastern border of, of Ukraine um, and Crimea. And in fact, there's a meeting of the so-called Normandy format, which is uh, France, Germany, Russia, not us, uh, in Paris coming up shortly to, uh, to talk about this. It's happening next week, as I understand it. What's our position? What's the U.S. government position on his initiative uh, to try to resolve the issues uh, on his eastern border in Ukraine? We strongly support him. Uh, the Secretary of State put out a statement, I think, last night uh, in this regard. And looking forward to the Normandy meeting. <clears throat> we think he's done some considerable steps that have helped uh, re move toward a resolution of the problems. We've seen a, a reinforced truce, although, as you say, the war is still hot. Uh, we've seen an exchange of prisoners, which was very welcome. Uh, the Russians returned the vessel that they had seized from the uh, Straits uh, last year, um, and they repaired a bridge, pedestrian bridge, that's very important for local uh, communications. Um, so we strongly support this, and we, we, have the, we definitely back the president and the people of Ukraine in this regard. I've always thought we should be part of the Normandy group. Why aren't we, and should we be? Um, it's a historical development as to why we're not there. I don't, frankly, I wasn't involved at the time. I don't have an answer for you. Um, but we are very, very closely lashed up with the Germans and the French in this regard. We also talked to the UK, um, and we will be very present during this process. Um, there are discussions about trying to expand it. Um, we'll keep you posted on that. Yeah, I would, I would hope that that could happen. On the Global Engagement Center, you mentioned earlier in response to a question from Senator Cardin that uh, you're supportive of it. In fact, you look at your proposal, uh, you're saying you're looking for additional funding. I think that's really important, and I know Senator Murphy agrees. We, we've worked on this over the years to try to ensure that we have the ability to push back on the disinformation, the propaganda. 
Uh, could you tell us a little about that? Uh, you have a new leader there, uh, Leah Gabriel. I met with her several times. I think she's taking the, the center in the right direction. Um, what kind of capabilities do we need that we don't have? And uh, why are you asking for additional funding? Uh, well, thank you for the, the vote of support for Leah Gabrielle. We're also very impressed by her leadership. Um, the, the GEC, as I understand it, provides primarily a coordination role. So while $75 million is a lot of money, um, there's even more, there are even more resources across our government, across our agencies, to promote this messaging strategy. Um, so if you look at each of those budgets, you'll see components of it, which the GEC will be responsible for helping to coordinate and make sure that we're doing everything we can to counter Russia's uh, propaganda. Okay. Well, thank you. My time's expired. Just to make the point, this is largely countries like the countries in the Baltics that are under enormous pressure. Correct. Um, and so we are, we are helping some of our allies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.